Today's episode is brought to you by... Playoffs. It's high noon. Hello, everyone, and welcome to High Noon Podcast, the competitive Overwatch podcast. I'm your host, The Blevins. With me, as always, is Deathblow. What's up, buddy? Not too much. What's going on? Oh, you know, just a lot of uh, Playoffs. talk. <laughs> We're going to be talking a lot about the... Playoffs. That I, we put the button in, so I'm going to be Playoffs. spamming that button Playoffs. a lot. So if you don't like this sound, fast forward, because it's going to be played quite a bit. But... By fast forward, he means to the next episode. Yeah, to the next, to the next. <laughs> actually, probably like two episodes because they're going to actually. That's be, fair. There's still playoff talk next week, and then the actual playoffs will be happening, et cetera, et cetera. But <clears throat> we will be talking more about that as we go on. Let's do a little bit of housekeeping beforehand. Of course, the Black Watch report always going, always talking about contenders in tier three. People are giving me uh, smack. Because I keep, I always say contenders in tier two, but contenders is tier two. Okay, okay, I get it. The not Overwatch League parts of over of competitive Overwatch. That's what you're going to be seeing on Blackwatch Report. Contenders, Path to Pro, uh, or uh, contenders, Open Division, all sorts of Path to Pro stuff, etc. That's all on Blackwatch Report. Make sure to follow them as well. Speaking of Blackwatch Report, we had a member of the Blackwatch Report on the new episode of Around the Payload last week. That was Kyle Wynn. We also had Frito, Save Reality, and Spider from Overwatch League Network. Really spicy episode. These these episodes where we're getting people who have been on the show a couple to one or two times, like they're really starting to get their to get their mix. I do like to get new people on as well, but it's always nice to get the uh, to get the. Uh, the, the returners back on which De- Deathblow you got to get on you got to get on I was just going to literally just going to say it's a, I think it's about time I made my season debut on yeah. around the payload it's, I, I, it's I been think too so long too. as as much as I love to let the the guests have fun and and let the the listeners get new people like it's it's too much fun for me to sit out for too long yeah I, you lose your crown if you don't use your crown after so long. You know, you don't even have to win again. But that's not true. But I, maybe it maybe it will be true. I was gonna say we make the rules. We can do. A, I can lose my crown if I want. <laughs> not true right now, at least. But, uh, we'll be doing another episode of Around the Payload next week, so keep an eye out for that. We are also going to be doing right after the recording of this particular episode. We're going to be doing foul play as always. Get your fantasy Overwatch League info and news and all that good stuff coming in i am still doing quite well in at least one of my leagues <laughs> uh and this week is a, a pivotal one because we got the weird like only half the teams are playing week so we're gonna have all that good info for you if you want to dominate your fantasy overwatch league games this week but we also have a new patron so patron hype for lisom at the one dollar level pretty sure been in the chats and discord for quite some time so always good to see new people uh joining the patreon if you would like to yourself you can go over to patreon.com slash high noon podcast and uh anywhere from a dollar to i don't know five five or ten dollars is the reasonable amount that i have other things on there but they're they're ridiculous so (laughs) any any amount helps uh if you do want to support us financially it does help patreon.com slash shiny podcast but let's move on and talk a little bit about what we did this week death though anything fun and exciting for you um you know i've been trying to trying to relax i had a couple busy uh busy weekends the you know a couple weeks before so um, just hanging out, watching some Overwatch League. Got a little bit back into Sea of Thieves. Some I hmm. uh, got my feet wet back in, in Smash Brothers and playing Overwatch again. Uh, just getting nice. getting the old band back together, getting some six stacks going. Um, no more PTR time, but it's it's so hard to get twelve ducks in a row, and it's hmm. exhausting to line them up. Um, and I seem to be the one that has to line them up if I want PTR <laughs> bugs to happen. Yep. So uh, I've been I've been kind of you know slacking on that. But I just think that patch is going to hit live servers so soon. If it's going to mm-hmm. hit stage two for Overwatch League, it's going to have to hit live soon. So mm-hmm. I guess I'll wait for that. Um, but yeah, I've been picking up DPS heroes again and just throwing actively, basically. <laughs> was, you know, not actually, uh, but the... by picking them, uh, you know, 
it's a pseudo throw in its own right. Um, but I want to get back to Zenyatta, and Zenyatta is a different animal than when I played him in mm-hmm. the past. You have to be more of a DPS player slash fragger now, and uh, I need to relearn how to hit headshots because mm-hmm. it's something that you you know you lose it when you become a Reinhardt and a Winston main for True. a couple seasons. So um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm I'm playing some DPS heroes to retrain my aim a little bit, and then go back to Zenyatta, whose aim is significantly easier than you know Widowmaker and McCree mm-hmm. and, and the things I've been playing. So um, it's been interesting. The win rate has not been near as bad as I thought it would be, but mm-hmm. Um, it's not good either. So. What yeah. about you, man? Other than being sick, what are you? Yeah, doing you might be able to tell I'm on the tail end of a cold right now. But <laughs> played some Lasertron, like IRL, IRL FPSs. That's always that's always good. Uh, Lasertron is just the greatest thing ever. But um, yeah, I've been playing just some regular Astros. laser tag for people that aren't yeah. from Buffalo. I don't think that's. A- that no, terminology only, is used outside there's of only our two, area. Yeah. There's only two. One's in Henrietta and one's in Buffalo. Um, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so I did that. I've uh, been playing Smash Bros. been playing Auto Chess. Played a little bit of Apex Legends. I played some Overwatch. Uh, I played, I think, like four matches. And I won two and lost two. And not even a single one of them were close in either direction. <laughs> we either completely stomped or got stomped. And it's like, man... Some of these games, it's just like I play and I'm like, I don't want to play anymore. <laughs> I'm done here. Once the writing's on the wall with these patches, like you have people that are just like, oh, I'm I'm maining this bad hero. Like I'm a junk rat main now because the patch notes tell me I need to be good right. at it. So like, they pick it up too early and it, uh, they just because they don't care about SR, they're on an alt right. account, whatever. It is, thing is when I'm playing DPS on my right. main, but yeah, it's you know it's it's a uh, a challenge for sure. I think we're getting roll queue soon, so hopefully that works. Yeah, roll queue would be cute. Would be cool, or at least it could be cool. I mean, I don't know how roll queue could be cute works. Too. Could be cute. Roll queue could be cute. Uh, <laughs> chit, save me, chit. <laughs> um, man, too many references there. But yeah, I don't. I don't know Sorry, how. Joke. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I feel about roll queue because like it almost creates a complete. It creates its own meta, which is fine. But then, like, you're not necessarily playing what's in Overwatch League. Like, right now, if, if Roll Q existed now, the Roll Q meta would be completely different from Overwatch League meta because there would be two well, DPS players, right? If ranked gets Roll Q, Overwatch League's get 2-2-2 two, two, two forced as well, I would guess. But You think I, so? We, we can have that conversation if it happens. Yeah, I do. Ooh, yeah, that's definitely an interesting conversation, but there's no reason to really uh, <laughs> dive into it if it's not going to happen. But that would be... That would be interesting. I don't even know what to think about that if that happened in Overwatch League too. <laughs> but we have, I mean, we've seen, we've seen precedent for like massive changes into how the structure of teams are. Like we were, we were creating podcasts back in the day when you could go Twinston, Twinston two CO Trey, 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 absolutely, yeah. Like we, we, um, and we advocated against, we advocated against single. Uh, I didn't like heroes. it. I thought, yeah, I thought it would limit the, you know, the options a little too much. And that's mm-hmm. why as much as I have similar concerns with roll queue, we really saw the benefit of that and, yeah. and kind of the way they were able to um, attack hero development. And, yeah. and I think it might be something that really helps them, you know, right now, how terrified do they have to be to like make that, you know, that other kind of hybrid tank support or, you know, it's right. really any tank right now in such a goats oriented meta, mm-hmm. you know, how terrified are they? What are they, what are we, what are we going to do? Make it a four, two meta instead of a three, three meta. Right. Nobody's going to like that. And, um, so I think it, it could have a lot of benefits, but like, like we said, we'll go into the ifs and, and what's and whatnot when uh, we know it's, it's going to happen. So. Yeah, that would be uh I mean it would make sense from kind of like a mm, traditional sports uh traditional sports perspective, right? Like you can only have you have certain positions and mm, I guess like technically a third baseman could be anywhere on the field, but like they're only going to be at a certain point. There's not like a baseball meta unless you're like going at for the for the most part. There's not a baseball meta where you're like playing your third baseman over at first base. Like it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. So I don't know. I could see it. I could see it happening. But we'll talk more about that if that ever happens. But let's move on here to it's news. Yeah, one piece of news here for this week: the LA Valiant have parted ways 
their head coach Moon after an 0 and 7 stage uh, and uh, amongst many other uh, pieces of controversy, including saying that Custa was just too smart to play with their team. He, his his knowledge of the meta just didn't was too high to play with the rest of the team. Uh, they have decided to part ways with Moon. Death. What what are your thoughts on Moon uh, getting the boot? Yeah, um, the the team just wasn't smart enough to execute his high level strategies, uh, and it, it, they had to make a change. Uh, no, it was the right time. Um, I, I've seen a lot of people say like, why wouldn't you give him you know another stage? Or it was only one stage. He was bad at one meta. Um, it, Listen, guys, it's not one stage. I, I, for a couple of weeks now, I've been echoing the same thing, and, it, and it's been about the Valiant and the Justice. And it's, what's that magical 0-4 line that the NFL has, right. where all of a sudden you're mathematically basically out of the playoffs? I mean, the Valiant aren't out of the playoffs, and neither is an 0-4 team in football. Right. But when you're what you're talking about now is just to get this team back to 500 which with the stage plan might be good enough to, you know, keep them alive in mm-hmm. the postseason conversation through the end of stage four. Uh, but now you're talking about them needing to go from a team that should have succeeded in goats, to be perfectly honest mm-hmm. with you. The tank line is the, the core of, of what made that team successful last year. That right. stayed together. They, uh, upgraded at the flex support position, which is crucial in the GOATS meta if your Discord orbs aren't on the right target, mm-hmm. that sort of thing. If you're not getting that damage from that position, uh, your team's going to have some problems. So, you know, they made a lot of moves that I think should have helped them in this meta, and the fact that Moon couldn't get them to perform even adequately in it. You know, right. we're seeing teams like the Gladiators, who are had a lot of problems this stage, but they, and they had a really tough schedule too, but they got a couple wins they put themselves in a position where they're not you know completely um you know up a creek without a paddle and, and not mm-hmm. able to, to help themselves out and rally that's not the case here for the valiant i think you know the o and four mark is the 25 percent of the season is gone you haven't mm-hmm. won yet and that's the exact mark we're at right now here with the valiant so uh, i think if there's any hope for this season not only did this coaching change have to happen now but we need to see player changes happen now Mm -hmm. um i know monty put out one of his musings videos recently talking about possible trade opportunities where do they go with this team from here and he mentioned you know some possible trade pot you know trade options there's a lot of pieces on this team some of which they're not even using right now that could be really potentially valuable to somebody else one of the trade ideas he mentioned was go get closer from dallas and give them custa back you know, something like that. Now, I don't think Dallas is in a position where they want to shake up team chemistry. They're kind right. of overperforming right now. So, yeah. But it's just an example. You have somebody like Space. What if they want to go full Korean with their roster now? How much? How valuable is Space in a trade? He's yeah. going to be super, super valuable. Yep. Um, so I think there's a lot of opportunity for them to, to make some adjustments. They don't need to go sign complete unknown free agents. But we're moving into a meadow where the DPS players are going to have to be carries. And maybe Kareev will be better at the actual DPS role than he was right. at the tank role coming from support. We don't know, but I can't imagine if we're in a, in a situation where you have to have your DPS players popping off and carrying your team and, and leading, you know, your team to, to fight wins. I can't imagine that agilities and Kareev is your ideal DPS mm-hmm. pairing. Now agilities and soon wasn't for me last year either. So it can work. Um, but with how, steep the climb is to get back into a, a playoff conversation now's the time to do it you give the the coach time while he can still shape the roster this season bring in the pieces that the new coach wants get everything squared away and start to mold the team for the future for what you're going to want in season three you have to start thinking that way as an organization the players the coaches that are in the room will not stop thinking about this season they're always mm-hmm. going to be what can we do to get into the playoffs now? But playoffs. they're not who decides when the coach gets fired. That's right. the organization. Job. So um, as much as the organization, I think, is to blame for a lot of the problems they're having right now, props to them for, I think, at least making this move at the right time. Yep. Um, so I, I think it was a good job there. But, yeah, it's a rough stage for the Valiant. Obviously, fans of that team, they've got a, a, a big up, you know, big following uh, after their second place finishing mm-hmm. in the standings last year. Um, so it's a rough go. The home crowd has to sit there and watch that all the time. I, it would be a lot better for everybody if that team started winning again. Uh, just ticket sales in the arena and things like that mm-hmm. on Valiant game days. Uh, so we've got to, you know, they needed to make the move. They did make the move. And, and I'll definitely uh, continue to applaud them for that because 
Atlas, and this is a, a meta where player skill, tank skill, coaching all shined, um, and they fell flat, and those should have been their strengths, or we thought those were their strengths. So I was very, very panicked when I got to 0-7. Yeah, I mean, we talked, we've talked, we talked about this for a while now, even before the league really started. Like, optics is definitely something that matters, right? Like, if your team loses out a stage entirely, you've got to do something if you want – any sort of legitimacy from an organizational standpoint, if you want your fans to have any sort of trust in you, like if they just go 0 and 7 and they're like, sorry guys, we're going to do better next season, but don't actively change something. Even if, even if the actual correct move is like, okay, well we've talked with moon. We've been working with him. We have him where he want, where we need him to be. And we're going to do something new this season. Like from an optics standpoint, like, the second they lose another, like, do you just wait for, like, for the people that are saying, oh, why don't you give Moon another another shot? Okay, when do you draw that line? Do you give him, if he loses the first game of stage two, do you go, oh, well, we didn't give him enough of another shot. Like, he, he only gave him one game. Oh, we only gave him two games. Oh, we only gave him, when do you, when do you draw the line, right? Like, what better time to draw the line than, okay, you got a whole stage to do this. You, you didn't perform in, like, like you said, Death Blow, a meta where they, at the very least, could have performed much better than they actually did. Yeah, didn't happen. Uh, the organization has to do something, and if like cutting players is is not the option that they're going to want to go for, likely because they were when they're building their roster, they're probably thinking about more than just stage one. So maybe moving some positions around, whatnot. But you know, they obviously have a, a better insight into the locker room than we do, and you know. Even just the like the public thing of like the statement of Custa is just too smart to play this meta. Like as much as we joke about it, like that's that's not Custa's fault, right? That's the like, hey, you don't go, oh well, we're gonna sit our best player because the rest of our team doesn't play with them. No, you get your team up to his sta- to his standpoint or to his to his point. You get yeah, them if, up to him. If he's, the you standard, don't... <laughs> if he's at the standard you want your team to meet, then you don't bench him because nobody else can meet that standard. Right. Uh, you need to use him to to bring everybody up, and and they're they're not doing that, and that will never sit right with me. Um, as a sports fan, I cannot mm-hmm. rationalize it under any circumstances. And I know he, he tweeted a little bit, Moon did, and it, it sounded like he feels he was quoted out of context. And so sure. if there's any reason to think that the video editors uh, chopped up that sentence in Dino Flask style, put it together, and we didn't <laughs> know any better because he speaks Korean, um, then shame on them, and they should be fired too. Right. But at the end of the day... I've never, listen, I didn't pull any punches or make any excuses. You'll remember me last season, or not last season, but the season before, if you're a a long-term fan of the show, screaming about the Buffalo Bills head coach and the stupid decision he made uh, to to bench our quarterback in the middle of a playoff run. Mm -hmm. You don't pull punches with decisions like that. I don't care what you saw in, in practice or in anything. I don't care how questionable the, the first quarterback that you pulled was the one you put in through five interceptions in one half of football. So right. the conversation ends with you were wrong and hindsight works that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's the sports business. If a head coach took a job with an overwatch league franchise and didn't know that he wasn't going to be able to go winless throughout a stage and not get fired, um, then it's his fault. He's without a job. Like he should have known better. That's the, that's the job you took. That's the world you entered where you live from the human element you have to feel bad for him to an extent sure um but listen how many times do you get to screw up at work before you, <laughs> you know what i mean it's a results business sports always will be that mm-hmm. way and if you're not producing results you're gonna lose your job the same goes for players the same goes for everybody it's just the way it had to go right and the last thing that i'll say in in line with the custa thing is like even if like you know he's a great player and that According to them, he's too smart for this better. He knows the under, his understanding is too high for the rest of the team. Put him in and let everyone else get up to his point, his standpoint. Because if you're not doing that, you're stagnating. At least if you have Custa in and you have your best possible lineup in, even if it's not the best lineup right now, you're working together. You're getting everyone else on the same page. And maybe you're making progress. The stage did not look like LA Valiant made any progress. They looked bad throughout and they, it, it got to this so I, I question the the choices uh, from the coaching staff um, regardless but we'll we'll see if uh, 
I, I think regardless of, of whose fault it actually was, the, the coach in this situation, the coach has to go, um, like we talked about. But let's move on here and find the button that I want to press. There we go. <laughs> it's tournament talk. Quick rundown of our first shorter week, not not the shortest week we'll have for matches, but a little bit shorter. We had LA Gladiators starting off on Thursday beat uh, the Atlanta Reign 4-0, Philadelphia Fusion winning 3-2 over the LA Valiant, and Toronto Defiant winning 3-1 over Chengdu Hunters. Moving on, we had Vancouver Titans stomping the Paris Eternal 4-0, NYXL Stomping San Francisco Shock four to zero, Dallas Fuel stomping Shanghai Dragons four to zero in the run back. Um, we also saw Houston Outlaws winning two to one over the LA Valiant, Seoul Dynasty winning three one over Washington Justice, LA Gladiators winning three one over Guangzhou Charge, and Toronto Defiant winning three to zero over the Hangzhou Spark. And rounding it out on Sunday, we had. Uh, San Francisco Shock 3-1 to one over Paris Eternal. Shanghai Dragons beating the London Spitfire 3-2. to two. There's a sentence I didn't think I would ever say if you asked me last last season. Uh, Boston Uprising beating the Florida Mayhem 4-0. to zero, And Vancouver Titans taking it to the brink 3-2 to two against the Chengdu Hunters. What a match for me to have fallen asleep during. I... Um, <laughs> Actually, was like I had already taken some uh, uh, some Nyquil, so I was like already like getting ready to just completely zonk out. And then I like look at the match, and it's like I'm like, okay, let's watch. I want to watch um, Vancouver crush Chengdu here. Like I just want to see it. And it's like it's one to one. I'm like, oh. And then I see it's two to one Chengdu. I'm like, oh. <laughs> like I have. And then I fell asleep. <laughs> And then I woke up and it was two two and it was going into the third match. I'm like, I need to like, I need to like get some pieces of tape and like Pee Wee right. Herman style, like keep my eyes open, <laughs> even though I'm like medically going to, I'm like, I'm like literally on drugs right now to fall asleep. Um, and I like listened to it as I was falling asleep. So it was a that was a good one to watch. A really kind of an opening for uh, uh, an awakening rather for Chengdu here. Any other matches, uh, death or any other. Uh, pivotal matches or results that we want to talk about from from last week well you know we saw some some interesting uh results for sure things that were very telling for the playoff conversation the shanghai dragons defeat of the london spitfires that you mentioned was absolutely huge it opened mm-hmm. the door for like three more teams to be in the playoff conversation mm-hmm. Um, so that was a very big change late in the week uh we did also see uh, just the Gladiators get back on track here with yep. a 2-0 and week. Wins over the Atlanta Reign and the Guangzhou Charge. Atlanta looked abysmal in mm-hmm. their match against the Los Angeles Gladiators. It was pretty rough. Um, they, were, they sat to Fran for two maps and things like that. And um, You know, I've, I've talked about maybe him not being like the carry that was promised, I think is the, the Game of Thrones terminology that I, I've liked <laughs> to use on that so far. But he's not really been put in a situation, I think, to like play the heroes where he can be that. So right. I don't know. It's it, it's interesting, but I don't think Nolaire is going to be any better in that regard. Like, DeFran was very solid and very good, mm-hmm. and maybe not like that Nene level of, of Zarya, that Sinatra level of Zarya mm-hmm. that, you know, really, really swings matchups and team fights regularly. Um, but he was far from like a problem for the team. He was mm-hmm. doing really well. Uh, so I didn't like seeing them sub him out and going into the matchup versus Houston especially in the Houston match versus L.A., another one that keeps Houston alive in the playoff conversation, mm-hmm. very alive now that they have the Shanghai beat, beat London there. Um, you know, both of those teams are coming off their worst performances at the stage where they, mm-hmm. they've played just their worst Overwatch. So now we're going into next week where on Sunday we've got basically what could very well be by that time a play, a win and in scenario for mm-hmm. these teams um to maybe maybe map score dependent something like that for for houston to be able to make it um but you know and now we've got two teams where i feel like i don't know what i'm gonna get from either of them really you know it's 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 definitely questionable atlanta um 
all stage looked like the better team in a vacuum, but they, they just both looked so bad. We're going into good maps for Houston. Like there's just basically the big storyline out of this weekend was um, who is and who isn't, you know, alive in the playoff race. Mm-hmm. And, and it's uh, it's going to be very interesting to say the least, because right now we're looking at the Guangzhou charge, the Boston uprising, the Seoul dynasty, the Houston outlaws, the London spitfire, uh, all here in contention, the Paris eternal with two matches could make a run and, and get themselves though well, their map differentials really bad. So I think they'd have a really rough time. Um, and also you've got, you know, the Guangzhou charge, the San Francisco shock is locked at four and three with plus five. So they should be good. But Atlanta is not secure. They've got two matches this week. Uh, the Dallas fuel can technically fall out here as well, uh, though they're in a good spot at four and two. But their map differential kind of stinks at plus mm-hmm. one when you're when you're higher match win differential than map win differential. I think that's uh, a, a bad overall map differential record there yeah, for them. They can, but they can fall out. <laughs> yeah so listen there's like 10 teams kind of all vying for these last four spots here um and that's about like roughly the number of teams that even play um so there's going to be a lot of playoff implications coming up in the final week we'll be talking about a lot of those um but i'm really too like they're also we, we were even going through it and if you guys don't know and you, you like playing with this you know with the nfl or, or wherever you normally have had experience with this um, OWPlayoffMachine.com yep. has a great tool where you plug in the scores that you think who's going to win and it'll tell you what the overall standings will be at the end mm-hmm. of the stage um, so yeah it's it's really really a lot of fun to, to mess around with that um, you know you've got those teams at the top that, that control their destiny as, as Bob's saying in chat Dallas yep. Atlanta um, Guangzhou I think can win and, and make it in on map differential they should be okay there um, and then you've got you know the teams that need help your Boston your Seoul your yeah. Houston and it's funny before the uh, which one of the I can't remember which one of the scores screwed up the the math on it but you know I put in my results for what I thought would happen and at the time before I looked at maps or anything like that I had Atlanta beating Houston three to two mm-hmm. um, and then I'm like well what if I just flip it just to see, can Houston make it in if they get here? And it's so close. It was literally a three team super draw scenario. I posted it in the <laughs> discord where you had, I, I think it was Seoul, Houston and Dallas. I want to say all mm-hmm. at four and three with like a dead, even zero map differential. <laughs> and like, we would have been in like round Robin playing against like one place. One, like they just have all to play against each super other. Drop. Like it would have just been the craziest ending of Sunday. I don't even know when they would have done it. Nobody knows because it's nothing that, that we've joked about super draws in the past, but not the three way um, super now with, draw. No, nah, not a three way super draw. And now, you know, with seven games per stage, more teams in the, in the running. Um, I think we might be more likely to see fun scenarios like that, more teams going into the playoffs. Right. So you're, you know, when you get closer to the middle of the pack, it's more reasonable that you have those ties. Um, so yeah, it's, it's going to be really, really interesting to see um, exactly how this all plays out. You know, at this point, I think you need to consider your Houston's and your London's as your long shots based on, on where they're sitting. Like they just need a bunch of help from other people now, maybe not a bunch, but a, a decent amount. Um, and then, yeah, you, you know, you've got your Atlanta's Atlanta with two games this week. Blevins, they don't even need to have a winning record this stage. And before this week, the thought of them like not being one of the top half teams mm-hmm. was kind of crazy. So yeah. And, and they, Chengdu and Houston, you know, with the way they're playing, Chengdu just went the distance against Vancouver. If we all didn't need a reminder that no game is safe, no matter how much in your heart you feel like one team's better than the <laughs> other one. Um, no game is safe. Everything's up for grabs here. And, and that just makes these last weeks of the stage so much fun. Yeah, I'd just like to point out that uh, both New York and Toronto have uh, secured their playoff spots. There's no, There's no situation where they can... They can fall out. So that's you it. are correct. Uh, and and Vancouver's in and Vancouver well. too. Sure, sure, sure. But who cares? About um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. This is uh, man. This is this is a this is a crazy week for sure. Um, but yeah, let's actually jump right into that week. I just wanted to see was there anything any other results um, that I wanted to talk about? I don't think so. Uh, the one thing that People were talking about. Um, no, nah, I don't even want to go into that. No, that, <laughs> let's 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 move on and uh, talk about this week. Oh, let's break it. Yeah! 
starting off the week, we've got Washington Justice versus Paris Eternal, and there seems to be an error on the website, but we're going to report what it says on the website. It says they're going to be playing on Busan, going into Kings Row, followed by, and this is what the website says, Kings Row again, and then Dorado. Uh, the assumption here is that there's uh, obviously something wrong. Maybe it's a uh, Temple of Anubis or Skya, maybe Horizon. I don't know, but I'm guessing gotta it's got to be one King. of those three. Those, it's got to be one of those three. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not Kings Row again, but uh, we'll see. Um, I've got Paris 3-1 to one here. Who do you got, Death? I've got Paris 4-0. I'm, I'm even down on Paris right now, but uh, the Justice just got easy clapped by backups from the Soul Dynasty. They rolled out the B team uh-huh. and crushed them. Uh, I'm looking at the, looking for the score here to see. Uh, yeah, it was 3-1 to one there. Mm. Um, so this isn't a match that to me is, is in contention, contention uh, despite you know all the talk and, and the, the Valiant already letting go of their coach. They're, they're off next week. They're able to do that. Um, I do still believe the Justice are number 20 on my power rankings mm-hmm. when I redo them for the stage. Yep. Um, they're not a team that I, I, I'm not seeing improvement from them, or I should say they're not getting better at near as fast as the other teams, right? Like if right. they're individually improving fine, but respectively they, they right. seem to be getting worse. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, so teams aren't respecting them. They're not playing their starters against them. It's not backfiring. I see no reason to think a team, even a team I'm not big on that is comfortable in this meta and maybe at their best here isn't, isn't going to get the win handily. So yeah, give me Paris for yeah, I got Paris three one. Um, say I agree with everything you're saying. It's just I I'm lower on Paris. I've been low on sure. Paris. Everyone was. I was very low on Paris going in, and then everyone was like, "Oh, they won a game. They won two games of the best three three team in the in the league." Didn't get me. He didn't 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 fool me. Didn't fool me. Um, but with that being said, Justice also looks like complete trash. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll give them one map, but that's uh, about as much as uh, we'll get there. Hey, the Hunters just took the Titans to five, so who knows? True. Anything can happen. Uh, moving on here, we have a playoff implication match. I mean, technically, uh, the Paris versus Washington match is a playoff. If Paris loses, there's, big, there's playoff implications for sure, but mostly just that it would knock um, Paris out of the running. I think they're... Yeah, they, they, I mean, they've, even they've if they win fallen from grace pretty hard. Yeah, they're they're they sixteen three they're, now in the standings. Yeah, they're not guaranteed in, but if they lose, they're definitely guaranteed out. I think. Yeah. And with a negative seven map differential, they're going to need to four zero this one. I think to have any chance. So maybe that's that's the compelling story from the first match is that one map you gave to Paris would probably be, or yeah, well, the one map you gave to to Washington might be the nail in the coffin there. For Man, they they might actually just be out. I'm trying to oh, actually let me move these around. Two four well, O's, I think, would put them okay, able to in. like be in that. The, yeah. The, yeah, they can be in. Um, I'm just trying to move these numbers around on <laughs> owplayoffmachine.com. Um, yeah, so that it, Paris needs to win, and a four O would be preferable for them for sure because the map differential is very close. But this playoff implication match here, direct head to head, London Spitfire versus Soul Dynasty. They're playing on Nepal, Hollywood, Temple of Anubis, and Route 66. We got some map scores here. Deathblow, who do you got? Yeah, these are the 10th and 11th teams in the standings. Uh, They're trying to be able to maybe potentially leapfrog teams that have already played seven but are above them now or teams that still have to go. Uh, It's going to be a very interesting one. Looking at the maps, uh, we're looking at Nepal, which is 2-0 for London, 0-1 for Seoul. So we've got a slight advantage to London there. Mm -hmm. Uh, we go to Hollywood. It's the exact opposite story. 0-1 for London, 2-0 for Seoul, one and 0 and two and 0 on Temple of Anubis, and then 0 and two and one and one on Route 66. So this one has some serious five map potential. Uh, yeah. To me, the question becomes, how does the Reinhardt play look from gesture? Because that's mm-hmm. been super shaky. It's been very good at times. It's been very bad at times. This stage, um, we're definitely going to be seeing Seoul starters back in. They're going to be rested. Uh, Nixel can. I can vouch for that not always being a good thing in a matchup. So who knows exactly how that'll play out. Um, But, you know, this one's very, very close. Um, Obviously both of these teams, you know, to lose here is to be out of the stage playoff running. Mm -hmm. I don't think the teams are super, super invested in stage playoffs, but 
it's money in their pocket. It's not like they, they're trying not to make it or anything right. like that. So, um, yeah, I'm going to take Seoul 3-1. to one. Uh, London, I just have a hard time. Like, Seoul might not be as high, as high of a peak team as London is, but I'm just always terrified of that inconsistency. It makes it really hard to, to pick a team like London to win. Um, so I, I'm going to go to Seoul just because I feel like they're more consistent. I'm more confident what they're going to get, you know, the, the steady improvement that we've seen throughout the stage. Mm-hmm. I think we'll continue on for Seoul here in the Nugget. Yeah, I've got Seoul here as well. Um, on the one hand, it is very hard for me to pick a team that just lost to the Shanghai Dragons. And then <laughs> I, I, I get it. Obviously, that doesn't mean anything uh, really because Shanghai looks like a perfectly reasonable mid-table team right now. But, man, it's just such a it's such a shock factor for me. It's going to take me a while to treat them like a real team. And But on the other hand... London does have that um, that rally factor, that uh, that playoff uh, the Kobe factor. Where they can the clutch, clutch factor. That's that's what I was looking for. Uh, they have the clutch factor where in the playoffs they can really turn it on. They almost look like an entirely different team when they're in the playoffs. Um, this isn't quite the playoffs playoffs but they this is playing for the playoffs and it looks like we lost we lost death blow so we're going to pause the rec- oh he might be back discord just updated ah I'm discord updated had okay. to do it. <laughs> perfect timing for discord okay we're good we didn't really lose anything there we are good um is your camera Oh, it's not on by default. Yeah, my bad. Nope. We're, we're fully okay. back now. Right. Okay, we are 100% <laughs> back. Uh, don't even really need to go in there and do anything. But, yeah, like I was saying, London can be a clutch team uh, in the playoffs. This isn't quite the playoffs yet, but this is playing into the playoffs, so playoff adjacent. Um, I've said playoffs too many times without pressing playoffs. the button. Um, yeah. I will say this, about too. About London, of all the teams that can squeak their way in, the Houstons, the Souls, Mm -hmm. I kind of hope London does it the most because as a fan, I don't need to see, you know, New York versus Houston again if they sneak into the eighth seed. (laughs) Uh, I'm good. Um, So, But, like, London is the team that can sneak in there and, like you said, be clutch in the playoffs, maybe give us an upset or push it deep. You know, and the other Mm -hmm. ones, it just feels like – it would be great to say we made the stage playoffs in stage one. Can we do it again? You know, that's, yeah. that would be great. It's not like, I don't want Houston to get there, but the most exciting playoff scenario would be London getting in there. So sure. I kind of hope I'm wrong. Right. No, I mean, I don't want London in for that reason, but well, uh... <laughs> you're in a different, you're, you're in a different spot. There. <laughs> uh, moving on. We'll talk about another playoff uh, playoff implication game here. Dallas fuel versus Boston uprising. Ilios, King's Roll, Volskaya, and Dorado. This one, we were talking about this in the pre-show, and I was I was lamenting over this one. Like I didn't know who to pick. Yeah. I I ended up going with Dallas three to two. Death. We've got some maps. Let's break them down. We do. Yeah, we've got Ilios at one and zero for the Dallas Fuel, one and one for the Boston Uprising. I, these Boston stats, though, I listed them because it's such a, a tight playoff race, and I, I wanted to try to analyze the the small numbers. Um, they're really tough for Boston because of the games played with a completely different roster. You know, like right. without color hex early without fusions in week right. two and um so that does skew these a little bit but yeah one and oh for for dallas there one and one for boston we've got king's row one and one for dallas oh and one for boston uh volskaya's oh two for dallas one and oh for boston mm-hmm. and then dorado's two and oh for dallas one and one for boston so there's not a lot of clear especially with the the caveat i talked about of, of right. weird rosters for for boston and even for dallas early on they were playing effect some of these some of those maps you know maybe Volskaya is not bad but they just played effect on it twice and he he didn't play very well so um, I don't want to lean too heavily on on map analysis for this one Um, I am taking Boston three to two but we both that was the conversation we had of like man I am just going back and forth on this repeatedly Mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day we were just you were going to pick one and I was going to pick the other one because this is as close to a coin flip match for me as as we can get Uh, I'm still trying to figure Boston out quite a bit Um, I think Dallas is riding a little high off the back of a stage with two matchups against Shanghai so Mm -hmm. I I have a hard time viewing 
Dallas is a five and two team. Um, right. And I think I'm weighing that a little too heavily since it doesn't actually impact the effect of this match here. Right. Um, but these are two teams that I, I think are, are very squarely in the mid table of teams. Um, the biggest factor for me is the who can win this. And it's not something I've been able to look into. Maybe I will before Pickham's lock uh, with the extra time we have this week on Thursday and Friday. But um, I want to know what maps does Dallas play Sombra on? And I think if three of these maps are, are heavy Sombra maps for them, I think that's their best form right now. Um, similar to how we saw them succeed in stage four last year and mm -hmm. big props to the coaching staff of Jane and Arrow for kind of recognizing this and moving the team in that direction. They play better right now for whatever the reason um, when RSTK runs the Sombra. Mm -hmm. uh, just as a team, they, they seem to have a higher win rate. And I actually tried reaching out to Captain Planet to see if he can give me some stats for RCK, um, specifically on those heroes compared to the rest of the league. Um, also because I, I get into arguments with Blaze and Bob about RCK all the time, so numbers <laughs> would be great to have for that reason. Um, but yeah, so, so this is a match that to me uh, really comes down to can Dallas utilize the really honestly great somber play that we've seen out of RCK so far uh, to shut down Fusions, uh, who I think has played better on main tank throughout the stage so far than OGE has. Um, but yeah, if they can keep RCK on the Sombra off the Diva, I think the team is better off. Uh, and so if the maps lend themselves to that, which I don't know which ones they've been playing it on, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Um, this could easily switch either direction. Um, it's as close to a true coin flip as I think we've yeah. seen all stage let's going into it. So. Let's get let's get the coin out. All right, tails never fails. I want both of these teams to lose. That's not an option. So my heart automatically roots against Boston. So all we're right. gonna give Dallas tails, tails. Yep. and go from there. Dallas is gonna get the win according to the coin. Ooh. So the coin sees Sombra in these maps. I see, I see. Yeah, this one is uh, from the Pick'em side. Pick whichever one you want to see. I, yeah. man, it is. I keep like going one way and then thinking about another thing, leaning back. It's like, oh well, Dallas is, has. I mean, they've won their last two games, but both of them have been against the Shanghai Dragons. Boston looked really bad, but they didn't have fusion. It's like, man, I don't know. Um, so the bottom line here is whoever shows up on Saturday and plays better Overwatch of the two teams is going to win because they're on paper to me very, very close. Yeah. And I know that's a very simple analysis, but um, that's exactly what we're looking at this stage more than anyone, anyone, right, that we've seen all season one, anything like that. It's whoever's better that day gets right. the win. And, and when these teams are that close, that's probably the only factor that actually matters. Right. Uh, Bob points out that Dallas actually won their last three games. So yeah, two of them were Shanghai. Two guys. of them were Shanghai. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, moving on here, we have another technically playoff implications for one of the teams: uh, mm -hmm. Atlanta Rain versus the Chengdu Hunters, Nepal Numbani Horizon Lunar Colony, and Rialto. I got man. There's a couple. I'm, I'm making kind of an, an oddball pick here. So if you're looking to stay consistent with pickups, I wouldn't do this flip here, but. I'm going with Chengdu 3-2 here. They took Vancouver Titans to Game 5 at the end of last week. Or, yeah, at the end of last week. They've shown that they can actually run some goats. They've uh, among or among or whatever, however you among. pronounce it, um, really showed that he can play more than just the Hammond and looked quite good, in fact. Um and also Atlanta not looking so great. So again, we've got kind of the two two trains meeting, one going up, one going down. Where are they going to meet? Uh, that's what we're going to see. So my heart said uh, Chengdu might actually be able to pull this one out three to two. Death, who do you got? FYI, in your visual that you did, not that the podcast can hear, both of oh, those yeah. trains were going, going up. up. One was going backwards. Yeah, so so one, one's got to come down. <laughs> one was going backwards and one was going forward. <laughs> um, there we go. Yeah, so it's an... Is we've seen enough of these these teams have rough weeks, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen teams substitute themselves out of matches right. and things like that, and then they learn from that. And I'm going to give Atlanta the benefit of the doubt, and I'm not going to kind of overreact to the one bad week. I think they've got a couple things going for them in this matchup that they won't have going for them in the next matchup, and that they were the first match of the week this week. Um, this past week, I should say, and Chengdu was the last match of the week. So that's 
three days, four days or whatever it is to, to prepare. That's extra time that they have to, re, you know, they were able to sit down as a team, watch and break down the Chengdu Hunters matchup. Uh, they put a little extra on tape for them. So I think Atlanta has a couple things going for them there, the, the long break. Um, I think we've seen, especially with expansion teams, they're much better when they have one game in a week. They're much better, you know what I mean, when they are they have extra time to prepare. Um it's been a little bit more pronounced to me. I don't have any numbers to back it up. That's just kind of been my impression, mm-hmm. mainly looking at Paris, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, when things sped up for them and it became right. two matches a week, they became really iffy uh, in comparison to what they were when it was one at a time. So I don't know. I'm, the veteran coaching staff for Atlanta, I think they're going to be able to calm them down, right the ship there. I'm going to give Atlanta the win three to one. Um, but I want to just for a minute talk about how much I love Chengdu. If they have always had the ability to play the Reinhardt at that level and just said, no, I don't want to, I'm not doing it. Take this wrecking ball. They're my heroes. Cause I don't yeah. care if they win or they lose. It doesn't bother me. They've just been super entertaining and a whole lot of yeah. fun. And they've refused to conform to the meta game. And Shang Yu, if this is how you want to gain fans, you're doing a phenomenal job over here with me and Blevins. I They're can just tell the wild never. cards every time. You never know. Absolutely. They can play whatever they want. They choose do, to play. Do we have ball. the wild cards drop queued up, or do we not no, have that done yet? Because, oh, I don't think we've we got one ready and everything. Oh man, it's the always it's the it's always sunny one, guys. Get ready. We'll we'll get it in early uh, sooner <laughs> rather than later. If yeah. Shang Yu's gonna gonna do this kind of stuff, I can't what can't wait to see what they do with a wide open meta, Blevins. Like, I am super pumped that Chengdu had this in their pocket and just refused to show it until now because I don't care that they've got too many losses on the stage because of it. All that stuff doesn't matter to me. Um, I just love watching them play. So uh, it's been very difficult for teams, and I know a couple players and things have talked about this. You can't find some – like, when you're, scrim- when you're playing against Chengdu this week – you can't scrim against Chengdu, and you can't find somebody to play the Chengdu composition. Right. Nobody knows what it is, so you can't practice against that. Or even and if they do, it's me, not going to be as good as they're running it. Right. It's it's 4D chess to me. It's exactly yeah. what I want. You know what I want to be watching from teams that I don't have a vested interest in, yep. like Houston yep. and Toronto. I would like you to put your best lineups forward, play the best compositions, mm-hmm. and win the most games, please. Yeah. Never uh, Chengdu, no wild cards. Though, no, not so much. Just I, play you, your you aces just, and your kings. Chengdu. Absolutely. Do. The, the boy absolutely. Um, so I, props to them. Uh, they're making this stage just an absolute blast. Mm-hmm. And, and even though things did settle down in the first couple of weeks, we were talking about how wide open and diverse the meta was. That's fallen apart a little bit. Um, and it's it's gone a little more into the heavy goats compositions, mm-hmm. but not with Chengdu. And, and we love them for that. They they're that spice of life you need peppered throughout your week. You know, they're, they're giving us that. Yes. And I actually may have been able to. Wild card, bitches! Okay, yeah, we have, we have the drop. <laughs> okay, we got the, that's good, that's good. Yes, um, we have it. <laughs> that's, that's Chengdu. We love it. I'm taking Atlanta 3-1. to one. My heart wants to be wrong because if Atlanta 0-2 is on the week, like that's an extra spot that does open up for Houston. Yep. I'd mm-hmm. rather them make it than not, though I don't. And it doesn't bother me much either way. Um, but yeah, I don't know. So I would love for Chengdu to win, but I'll, I'll take Atlanta. I'm going to quiet the excited little kid in my brain that just wants to watch Wrecking Ball roll over mm-hmm. people and say that Atlanta's going to going to figure it out. Which means that Chengdu has to be tails for the coin. Uh, they do. I don't know if you said, but you took Chengdu through yes, the I two. Did. So Okay. So yeah, Chengdu is tails. Coin is up. This one's heads. Unfortunately... Ooh. Ooh. I went with my head and so did the coin. That's rough. I'm 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 a little sad. Well, maybe they'll pull out. Uh, maybe they'll pull out five DPS comp and just five maybe, tanks. Like, Go five the tanks. opposite direction. Yes. I think that would be hysterical. <laughs> that would be hysterical. But moving on here, we've got Paris Eternal versus Philadelphia Fusion, Busan Kings Row. Horizon Lunar Colony and Rialto. Again, more Playoffs. playoff. Uh, every one of, almost every one of these matches has some sort of implication for the playoffs, except for the actually, ironically, the next one we're going to be talking about. But <laughs> uh, I've got Philly here 3 1. I'm still not big on Paris. They have shown me almost nothing that's impressive. Yes, everyone's going to be, oh, well, the first few weeks, they were the greatest 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, no, I was not, I was unimpressed then. I'm unimpressed now. What do, what do you got, Duff? 
Yeah, that's a team that it's a meta that tells you you need like your tank play needs to carry the day. Um, they're not really getting that, I don't think, from their really their Reinhardt or their Zarya. Right. Uh, we saw them switch from soon to Shadowburn. Finally, so, we got some Shadowburn. Listen, if you drafted Shadowburn in season one and you for some reason had a keeper league uh, for fantasy, so you've still got him, now's the time you, you can did. bring him out. It's and you didn't it's the drop moment. him. <laughs> and you're right, and you've kept him this whole time. Now's the time. It's your moment. Go for it. Um, but yeah, so I, I, it's really struggling to pick Paris in this one, obviously with a team with the ups and downs that the Philadelphia fusion have, uh, is a little bit difficult to pick as well, but despite all their problems, Blevins, they've not lost a match that Boombox has played. Like they've, yeah. they've looked up, they've looked down, um, but they're not punting those matches that mm -hmm. they were in the first season so far. So right. I'm going to assume they're able to keep it together well enough to get the win here. Um, their tank play remains questionable on, on Philly's side as well, but I, I still, I, as my, you guys know I'm not a big Sato fan. I think he's better than Ben Vest, so I think they even get the check mark there. I'm going to take Philly 3-1. to one. Um, Paris is a little bit more what I thought they were going in despite mm -hmm. kind of the arrival of Hip um and and his very strong play throughout the the stage so far it's yeah. just not enough hip hip is a huge part of my uh fantasy team so i'm, hip. I'm, I'm hip all up. about i'm all about hip, but, hip up uh, anonymous. i'm not uh i'm not picking them beating philly here but moving on here washington justice versus florida mayhem nepal hollywood volskaya and dorado the big thing here is that we finally, in good faith, get to pick? Uh, we get to pick Florida Mayhem as a victory here. We can, and we both do three to yeah. one. Uh, Washington is. This is a great opportunity. Like, man, you almost. I almost want him to win a little bit. Like, as much as I'm, I, I'm going to be rooting for Florida because we have ties there, and I'm so rarely able to like pick them with confidence right. and go with it. Um, what a dagger it would be to the Valiant. If if Washington right. was able to get in there with a sole O and seven team, yeah, that would be a feels bad man. So party of kind of wants it for that. Well, like, it also gives Ito you know, his first win, ever, ever. Yeah, yeah, he, that would be good. That would be good for him. Yeah, uh, but yeah, listen, right. Washington's just they're a team with a lot of holes. They're they're not playing really doing anything well at the moment. Um, I think Fozix has been their best player so far on the main support, but Guido's been so bad. I want Fozix to go back to his the flex support position he used to play. Um, they played, I think it was Stratus. I, they try, tried one of their DPS players moving over um, to flex support this week, and mm -hmm. it just signed somebody. Like, I know right. you had budget problems, <laughs> but I, I, you, you've sold enough jerseys by now to make enough money to sign one more player. I think like something like you can, you can make a move. Um, and it's, it's perplexing to me that they haven't, uh, even their smack talk game is terrible from yeah. Kate. I'm sorry, Kate. It's bad. You got dunked on by Philly. You dared to call the valiant versus Houston peak overwatch right while that was happening. And to be fair, those were two teams doing nothing to deserve to win. Like Houston played awful. <laughs> Valiant played a little bit worse. They played so bad. Houston won on route 66. Um, and so she wasn't wrong, but I just, you can't write that tweet and then go out there and just get absolutely <laughs> dumpstered by like uh, backups. Right. <laughs> really, you know, it was, that was compared to what the justice put out. That was peak overwatch Kate. I hate to break it to you. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I, not even their smack talk games up to snuff right now in Washington. Um, jokes aside, you know, keep it up, Kate. You'll get better at the smack talk. It takes some time. Um, I mean, the smack keep, talk keep is trying. fine if they actually have anything to back it up with. That's <laughs> or just be or just be good. Like you can't just be like, "Cut, these teams are bad." When you've got the worst team in the league, like get, right. get specific. Get specific smack talk. Do you learn what the Philly Fusion did to you, right. and go for the throat, or or maybe sit down. Um, yeah, you can be on a bad team and have some good smack talk. That's that's definitely possible, but it's just it's not what I'm what I'm reading right now. I agree. Uh, <laughs> let, let's move on to the uh, another big head-to-head -head playoff implication match here in Houston Outlaws versus Atlanta Rain. Seems like we've kind of been alluding to this climax <laughs> the entire show. We've got Ilios, Kings Row, Horizon Lunar Colony, and Rialto. 
I this is another one that I was not sure who I wanted to pick and who I should pick. So I, I'm not sure right now. I've written down <laughs> an answer, and we talked about this in the pre-show, and I'm going to break it down for you guys because I think it's actually that interesting that until I know what map is the tiebreaker map for these two teams, I don't feel as though I can pick this match accurately mm-hmm. um, because I don't know I'm picking it in four, and I'm giving it to Houston three to one, and here's why. Ilios is right now one and one for the Houston Outlaws and two and one for the Atlanta Reign. Overall, we're looking at a 50% win rate for Atlanta on control. Houston's the better team on control right now, 63%. Okay, So I think that's basically with an extra win for Atlanta. We'll call that map a push. Um, we go into Kings Row, 2-0 and for Houston, 0-2 oh for the Valiant. Give me Houston the there. Valiant. For the rain, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, then we go to Horizon Lunar Colony. It's 1-0 and oh for each of them. That's another push. We go into Rialto. Well, zero and one for each of them. That's another push. So super, super possible that this goes to five. Yeah. Right. Like just looking at the map pool, it looks very clearly like it could go to five. Mm-hmm. So because we have Ilios as the first map, the two options left are Nepal and Busan. Both of those maps are a two and one win rate for Houston. Mm-hmm. Control is by far their. I'm actually saying this out loud. You're not hearing me wrong. Houston is by far at their best on control, mm. okay, with their 63% win rate. But we look at the map specifically again, two and one, each of them for Houston. We go to Atlanta and we've got one and oh on Nepal and zero oh and two on Busan. Mm. So if the tiebreaker map to me is Busan, I want Houston three to two all day. I just think that is the most likely outcome because if they get to five, which is very likely, if they don't, Honestly, those are the good maps for Houston, like Horizon Lunar Colony. We might not have historical stats on Atlanta, so I'm not going to use them to try to predict the map. Horizon Lunar Colony is historically a very good Houston map. Um, Rialto, we have no historical uh, historical data on. Right. Kings Row, we have plenty. Houston's lost once or twice on it ever in in the two years so far, um, <clears throat> like twelve and one or twelve and two. And then, yeah, like, like we talked about, Kings or, or Cough. I think Houston's just a better team on the game mm-hmm. mode there. So, yeah, this is going to be really interesting. And then if you go into the other map, which is Nepal, all of a sudden we're very, very up for grabs again with 2-1 and one versus 1-0. and oh. uh, It's really, you can't really call a decisive advantage there because the map stats are still really shallow. Um, but, yeah, this one's honestly razor thin. Uh, the reason I'm leaning Houston in a vacuum, right, if the, if the Atlanta Reign didn't play the night before in the final game of the night, against the Chengdu Hunters, who they can't sleep on, I would probably pick Atlanta to win. But because they're coming in back-to-back days, um, you know, everything like that, both of these teams are coming off their worst performances at the stage, so I'm throwing that out completely. Um, And I'm just calling this what I think it is, uh, and maybe not everybody sees it that way, but a super, super close, razor-thin margin Mm -hmm. um, with a slight advantage to the team that that has, like, that out in map five to just, like, nope, you're terrible on that map, we're really good on this map. So we're probably going to win there. Um, and if it is Busan and Houston loses it in five, then it's official that map five is like a major issue for Houston. And hopefully they can avoid that going forward. Mm-hmm. But um, with a stacked map differential there on the map, I think you'd have to say something's up um, if they drop it on Busan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With that being said, I'm picking Atlanta 3-1. Yes. <laughs> yes. Even though, like, it, man, I... I really don't know because I do – I am picking Chengdu here 3-2, and I don't know if, if – I don't know if that's necessarily consistent. And these picks aren't ne- – the picks that we make aren't necessarily factoring in the other matches. So take each mm-hmm. one in and of themselves, not with the, What about with oh, my counter argument to that? And to I'm actually defending you picking Atlanta here because I think it's – honestly, I think we should have them both. Like I think it's just like Boston and Dallas where like right. – it would feel disingenuous if we didn't represent this as 50 right. 50 among us because it's that close. Um, what about this stage has made you think that it has to be consistent, right? right. Like that the previous match <laughs> right. result has to mean anything right. about this match result. Right. It just doesn't have to. No. Um, and this is another one like the, like the Boston Dallas one where if one of these teams shows up and is playing better than the other one that day, they're going to win. And it might not even be close. Um, but if they both show up and they both play well, 
it could be anybody's game easily. So, yeah. um, and we don't know what, like if we knew what the, you might even flip it if you knew that the tiebreaker was on Busan where it was a bad map for, sure. for Atlanta, who knows, but we don't know that. Uh, Nate, please uh, put it on the website, but um, coin tails, tails never fails. So Houston is getting tails. Atlanta is heads. Ah, stupid coin. It's going with the rain. Uh, it's wrong. It's not been a hundred percent right. So it's not like we have to worry about that. <laughs> Heck, it was tails every time one week, so I'm not going to sure. let it get me down. I'm yeah, lying. I'm pretty upset at this coin right now. I think this is certainly a match of the week. Um, yeah, having gone through almost every other fantasy week. players map five potential all over the place on this one on Boston. Um, yeah, this those two matches. Like I love that we have a headliner, big playoff implications both days. Mm-hmm. Like the schedule just really it worked out for that. I don't know, maybe it was just lucky or maybe it would work out that way no matter which what order the games were in i don't know uh, but yeah it's, it's a close one yeah last match of the week and of the regular stage here unless we have super draw in which case it it's i possible. guess it, that would technically count as the no i guess that would count it doesn't matter what it would count as i'm just hoping there would be exhibitions draw. too so. i'm hoping for the super draw guangzhou <laughs> charge versus the vancouver titans we've got Ilios numbani volskaya and dorado I got Vancouver here three to one. What do you got, Death? Yeah, uh, bumper seems good to throw at least a map, a map, a, um, a match. Yep. So I'll give the Guangzhou Charge to one as well. Uh, I like Vancouver three to one here as well. They, they haven't lost yet. I know it was close. I know Chengdu was thought Show to be it. much beneath them. Um, New York's gone to five against teams they're considerably better than as well. It, it happens. Uh, as long as you win, at the end of the day, it actually doesn't. So. Yeah. I think Vancouver is officially at the we're not picking them to lose unless they're playing against New York or they've lost it before. I think it's clo- it's very close to that. I would ha- we'd have to see some crazy performances from teams beforehand. I don't know. Yeah. It, it it's close, but definitely getting going with Vancouver here. But that's going to be it for the week. We got the short week here. A lot of playoff implications. Lots of great, lots of great matches going on this week. There's, man, the OW playoff machine is definitely fun. So check out OWPlayoffMachine.com. Uh, hashtag not an ad. We're not associated with them at all. We just found it, and it's a cool tool. So use it. Um, play around. See if you can get your favorite team into the playoffs. And if you can't, it would be cool if. Um, Oh, no, they do have it on there. Never mind. They do have eliminated from playoff contention. Okay. Um, Yeah, so definitely uh, a really cool tool and definitely going to be an interesting week. Again, guys, we only have Thursday and Friday. And, A, if you're a fantasy player, you should be listening to Foul Play anyway. But if you aren't able to check out the episode of Foul Play, make sure you've got teams from these teams playing in your fantasy or your pick them or your – and to clarify, we have yeah. Saturday, Sunday, not Thursday, Friday. Oh, did I say Thursday, Friday? Yes, yeah, Saturday, Sunday. Sorry. Definitely not Thursday, Friday. We're not playing on Thursday, Friday. We are only playing on Saturday, Sunday. That's what I meant. Um, yeah, so that's going to be it for the week. Any last-minute uh, stuff before we uh, head out, Death? No, I'm looking at the time. Are we under an hour, Blevins? No, we're right over an hour. Right over an hour. I will. It feels short to be on to be ending on time. Feels incredibly yeah. short. So, uh, I guess I'll give myself a pat on the the back for for us being able to pull that off. But um, no, no parting words other than uh, go Houston. I guess right. Uh, yeah. I mean, both of my teams are already in the playoffs, so I couldn't care less about the other teams right now. Actually go Houston, because I feel like both of my, both of my teams have already beaten Houston. So yes, go Houston. I want them in the playoffs. Gives, gives you an easier path if you're going for the win. Yes. And from your spot, might as well go for the win. It doesn't hurt you not. I might as well (laughs) go for the win. But guys, that is going to be it. Thank you everyone for watching. Make sure if you're here live, Stick around and listen to Foul Play live as well. If you guys are listening later in podcast world and want to check us out live, we record every Monday at seven, around 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, at twitch.tv slash high noon podcast. You can, of course, support us there. We are Twitch uh, affiliates, so you can subscribe there, bits, all that good stuff. You can also head over to patreon.com slash high noon podcast and support us there you can always go to highnewpodcast.com and find all the links to everything that we do there or any social media youtube 
uh, Twitter, all that stuff. We're Heinian Podcast everywhere. We can be found all those places. If you do subscribe on Twitch, I believe we have some emote slots available on our Twitch channel. So yeah, if you have any emotes that you really to. want. Well, we're going to, but either way, we'd like to work on them ahead of time. So let us know of any emote ideas or anything like that that you guys might want to see on the channel if you're a sub, and we'll put it in the hopper and see what we come up with at the end. No promises, but, yeah, we'd love ideas. Yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. But that is going to be it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. For Death Blow, I'm the Blevins, and remember, it's Hannon. Got his boots and he put on his hat. Same day, it's in his past, and he's not looking back. He says, Finding mine now guides my way. He's not good, but he sure ain't bad. He'll make amends for the sins that he has. He says, I'll change the world one bullet at a time till I find mine. Super draw, super draw, three way super draw. Three. <laughs>